Alright guys, it's Fen here again. So today we're actually going to be making this and I've, you know, named it Bubble Fire. I'm not really sure what you could really call it, but I'll just play it for you. And um, you can kind of, you know, discuss for yourself um, what you think it, it, it looks like um, and, you know, what you could really use it for. And one of the things that I really like about this is the, the actual textures that I've used and, I don't know, it looks really nice. It looks like a balloon. Um, and perhaps that balloon is um, melting in some way um, and so I thought I would do a tutorial on this because um, I've been really busy over the last few days and um, next week, well actually this week um, and a little bit of next week I'm going to be extremely busy so there won't be any videos really uh, unless I can squeeze them in but um, yes yeah, so I thought I would do a tutorial for you guys just to keep um, videos flowing as best as possible um, so yeah let's um, get on with it because it is a very simple um, method uh, and it doesn't really take too long so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a sphere and this first sphere is um, it doesn't have to be anything special you can leave it as default segments um, we're going to duplicate that sphere and we're going to reduce the size by half and then we're going to move this up to something like this now we're going to go over here to this menu and we're going to use a meta ball. Now what a meta ball will do is it'll kind of blend objects together in this kind of mesh format. Now um, with this we want to reduce the editor subdivision to get better looking results. However the lower you go in terms of subdivision the denser it becomes. So therefore when you do play with this it's going to become a lot more um, slower. So we want to have a happy medium or something maybe like let's go for 10 and we can turn off the um, the lines and you can kind of see here we've got this um, kind of egg shape if you like uh, and you can make this any shape you want and uh, you can make it a full sphere um, I kind of like to go for this egg shape just because I, I find it it looks pretty cool it looks like a balloon um, so what we're going to do now is um, well we can add the effect to it because it is it is pretty much as simple as this um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to um, simulate and we're going to go to particles I'm going to use an emitter now an emitter is one of the simplest ways to emit particles inside of Cinema 4D it comes set up kind of pre-made and um, you don't have to do any espresso to edit it so it's very simplistic um, what we're going to do is going to press play and you can see the particles will shoot out into the Z um, so we need to rotate this 90 degrees and then they will start shooting up. Now it's important where you place this because depending on where you place it, it's going to affect um, everything else. So um, I think right here in the center and the size that we have is relatively decent. So you want something like this. So in order to get actual um, geometry to emit from this, we need to duplicate this sphere again. And we're going to drop this under the emitter now nothing is happening just yet and that's because we need to go down here to show objects now once we do that you can see that this emitter uh, will emit these objects now that's a little bit too big so I'm going to reduce this down to maybe 16 now the segments don't really matter because we do have render perfect on um, and when we actually um, put this inside the meta ball the meta ball subdivisions will take over so you don't have to go too crazy um, but I'm leaving everything as default at 24. So now if we grab this and put it inside the meta ball, you can see we get this really, really cool effect. Now I'm just going to increase this to 240, um, just so we have a little bit more room. And you can see this is kind of the effect we get. And this is pretty much the entire effect in a nutshell. Now whatever else you do to this is pretty much your creativity. Um, so for instance, if you want the particles to um, emit more, we can increase the amount of particles here. And if we want to, let's say, um, the end scale, we want to put this down to maybe 0.4. So when they come out, they're going to get smaller and smaller as they go up. And that's kind of what we want. Now as you can see here, it's kind of like, like a big blob, which is kind of cool. Now if we don't want that type of um, effect, then there's other things we can do. Uh, one of them being um, the, the end scale here. 
we can put this down even further and we can give it a bit of variation. Now what we can do is we can reduce the size of this as well. So something like this. You see you get a completely different um, re result really. Um, and we're going to go back into the particles and we want it to emit longer basically. So once it gets to 150 frames it's going to stop and it's going to peel off. So what we want to do is go to the um, the, the lifespan here uh, which is basically saying 600 frames. Um, we want the stop emission to be more than the 150 frames. We want it to be um, let's see we can do it maybe 250 and that basically means it's not going to stop now um, when the final animation ends we're still going to be emitting particles I mean if that's something you want to do cool if not then you can of course change it um, you can also do other things by maybe reducing the, um, the count here down to maybe 15 so we get a bit of a different result. You can see they're more splitting off now, which is kind of cool. Um, if we don't want that, we can increase these just a tiny bit to see if we can keep these connected as they move up, which this is doing quite nicely. So I'm just going to increase this maybe to 19. Um, that was pretty good. So if we want these to not go up as far, we can change the lifetime span here. At the minute it's set to 600, so if we bring this down to, I don't know, let's say 180, and we'll do a variance of maybe 70. And we can kind of just see how this is going to affect it, and kind of how we want it to be affected. So that's pretty good. I think maybe it's a little bit too low. I might go up to maybe 239. So they just fade off just at the end. That was pretty cool. Now again we can increase this as well. And see if we can get some different results. That looks pretty nice. The variation of the depth of these maybe is a little bit too high. So we can kind of use this. Now I know it looks a little bit chunky in the viewport, but like I said, if we're going to hear the subdivisions and bring these down, the smoother it will get, but the slower the actual render will be. So you don't really want to go too crazy with this, because if you've got a slow system, it can uh, cause big issues. But in the final render, you can put this down to one if you want. I'm going to probably put it at two. And um, you know that is pretty much the the basis of this. Now this is just the beginning uh, because there's a lot more cool stuff you can do with this. Um, if you go to simulation and we can go to particles, and you can see you've got a lot of um, effectors here. You've got um, destruction, so you can destroy particles when you get to a certain point. You've got deflectors, so you can bounce them off of maybe a plane up here and bounce them somewhere else. You've got wind, so if we put in a wind and we put this up here and we press play um, let's see if we rotate this you can see that this is giving you some really weird results now well I won't say weird but really cool results so you can see if we put this like this and if we just bring this uh, to a halt bring it back and just increase this to maybe 18 and then we're gonna get a lot chunkier results but we're gonna see the kind of dynamics a little bit better which is kind of cool. So this can go in lots of directions. Um, and what you could do is you could even have an tractor up here. So when they get blown over here, they will get attracted back up here. Um, and there's so much more you could do with this. We can add turbulence to make this a little bit more jittery. And uh, we could bring the speed down so it's not as really abrupt. Because we really want to affect it just a little bit. Let's maybe do 0.5 and the turbulence is kind of what we want to affect. So let's just have a look at this. See, so yeah, that's looking really, really cool. Um, a lot different. It kind of looks like fireworks, really. So yeah, let's just say we're happy with that. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to kind of just you know light it uh, I wasn't really gonna light it but I think the tutorial is really shot as it is because that's pretty much it 
um, I might as well do a lighting um, setup for you guys as well. Um, so I'm going to make a new material, drop this on here, and we're going to go into the color channel. I'm going to use a gradient, and we're going to use uh, click in the gradient, and we're going to use a V. So that's going to be up and down. You can see here from the viewport, and then we can just basically make this any color we wish. I'm going to go for like a a purple to a pinkish. Um, I'm going to go into the color channel. I'm going to copy that channel. I'm going to the luminance, and I'm going to paste that in as well. Um, the reason you do this is because it makes it super super bright, which you know, makes it look really nice. Now one thing you will know is when you render in a viewport, you're gonna get what's in the viewport. If you want your final output, you will have to render to this um, output and you can see there is a, a drastic difference in appearance. So you do need to kind of make sure that you you do regular, um, I'd say renders of that to keep it, um, you know, looking exactly what you want it to look like. Um, so what we can do, if, if it is too small, you can increase this um, radius and you know you can render it out and you'll get you know your different results. And um, the thicker the spheres are, the more they will uh, basically clump together like this. So you know we, we can render this out and we can see some different results. Like of course in here it looks a little bit different to what we get here. So you know you do need to find that um, that medium if you like to what's good and what isn't. You know, generally you can go down really low and you know render it out, but it is going to be really, really slow. So I, I don't know, just find a medium that is good for you. Um and basically go from there. Um so like this is really, really slow. So I might just bump it back up to about five. And five seems okay. Um, however, we can't really see much detail in it until we render it out. So I guess that is really one flaw, but I guess it really depends as well, um, like what effectors you use. Um, but yeah, it lo looks good. Um, so what we're going to do now is, like I said, we're going to light this. So we're going to get it to a really good point. Um, and you could cache this out if you wanted to. I'm going to say maybe there. Nope, I mean about there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a um, a sky and I'm going to make a new material, drop it onto my sky, and I'm going to go into the luminance channel, and I'm going to find a HDRI. I'm going to use um, one of my HDRIs. Um, this one may do. So I'm just going to render this out and kind of see what it looks like. And I may have to rotate it around, depending on what I get. Uh, and did I put it in the wrong channel? I probably did. Um, yes, it's not turned on, that's why. <laughs> so let's just render this out again and we might be able to see some different results. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, so what we're going to do on this material, we're actually going to put on the reflection. We're going to put on a Fresnel. And in this for now, we're going to give it some blurriness. We're going to increase the blurriness samples a little bit. And then just reduce these down just so it's not mega bright. And then give it a render again. Now it's going to be a little bit slower, but you're going to get this really, really funky result. And this is what I got. Um, I use a different HDRI. Depending on what HDRI you use, you will get different results. And uh, that looks pretty cool. Um, so on the sky, I'm going to right click, going to go to Cinema 4D Tags, and I'm going to put on a compositing. going to use Scene by Camera, so we don't actually get to see that HDRI anymore. And then from here, you can do two things. You can make a seamless floor, or you could just, you know, create a gigantic box. Like so. And like this. Uh, make it editable with C and basically delete these. Go into edge mode and click these two edges. Right click and use bevel and basically bevel these out. Then what we can do is we can grab the polygon, select all these and use a extrude. And we're going to extrude these out and we're going to 
place a cap on this and then what we can do from there is oh, I wish them kids would shut the fuck up <laughs> try to do a tutorial um, anyways I'm gonna grab these and make sure of course that everything is selected drag these out on both sides and then we'll make a new material and just put this on here and this is just going to be a white material with no gloss and then we can um, bring this up like so and bring it a little bit forward and then if we zoom in on this and render this out you'll see we'll, we get a really nice white background um, and we obviously get a really nice um, environment here well the object so what we can do now is we can go a little bit further we can um, let's see I might actually change this to luminance white I just want to see will that give me a different result yeah it's definitely going to give me a brighter result maybe that's something I might want to play with um, so let's go into the luminance and bring the brightness down to probably 50% um, I'm going to go into the render options and I'm going to put this to 1280 by 720 I'm going to add ambient occlusion and global illumination put the settings to low and then make sure I reposition the camera and give this another render out now by all means you don't really need to add global illumination um, you probably get away with not having it to be honest um, I just kinda like it because it gives it a lot more um, vibrance because the colors are going to be bouncing which is nice um, so yeah I mean this looks really really cool uh, you can see it looks kind it looks bubbly it looks like chewing gum uh, or really nice plastic and it didn't too, take too long to render out 24 seconds for that scene um, so yeah, um, if you want the shadows to be a little bit more pronounced, um, you can of course move the cube up. Now what you want to do is probably play through your animation because you can see how, how far the bottom does actually expand. So just go all the way through it and you know, as you're going through, just move it and just so it's close to um, the floor. You don't want it overlapping because when you obviously render out it's going to look bad. Um, but this actually looks pretty decent. Uh, we'll we'll get kind of almost through it and then we'll um, give it a render. Now one of the things you will have to do as well, depending on how high this goes, uh, you will have to adjust your camera angle. So you can add some camera animation in there as well. So I think maybe there I can go back to here and you can see, you know, we need a bit more room. Um, and then we can render that one out and we can kind of see you know what it's going to look like uh, and the cool effect it's going to give us which is nice um, and you can you know change the colors up to whatever you like and you get this really nice result um, and it just looks really really cool and you can use this for a lot of things uh, you could refine it even more use it as kind of a ghost you could put it upside down add some gravity to it um, but this kind of looks like a water droplet or a paint droplet or something like that so yeah, there's there's many different methods you can use this for, um, and I think just overall it looks really nice. You can see down here we've got a shadow, but it's kind of a a pinky shadow because the um, GI is reflecting that. Um, so that pretty much is the tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, and um, I will catch you guys in the next tutorial, which hopefully will be soon, um, and hopefully I'll be releasing the rig soon as well. So make sure you check back for that. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, hope you subscribed. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.